listening to Legal Talk Network. Hello, and welcome to our podcast live from the ABA section of Antitrust Law Spring Meeting 2018. This is Adam Beagle of Alston and Bird, and I'm the host for today's episode, which is being recorded on location at the ABA section of Antitrust Law Spring Meeting 2018 in Washington, D.C. Today we have a distinguished panel with us to discuss uh, the topic, Dialogue on Developments in African Competition and Consumer Protection Law. Uh, with me uh, at the moderator's mic, uh, uh, Dion and Hugh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, they're with the Office of International Affairs of the Federal Trade Commission. Hello, I'm Dion Woods-Bell. I'm in the Office of International Affairs at the Federal Trade Commission. I'll be joining Adam today, as well as Hugh, to discuss developments uh, in Africa and the United States. It's very exciting. I'm speaking today in my personal capacity and not on behalf of the FTC or any individual commissioner. And hello, this is uh, Hugh, uh, also in the International Affairs Office at the FTC. I'm the Deputy uh, Director for International Consumer Protection and delighted to participate here. And uh, my views also are not necessarily official views of the Commission. Terrific. And I'd like to welcome our four panelists. Uh, could you each introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about uh, your role in your particular competition or consumer protection authority uh, within your country? Hello, this is Atif Yaqub, the chairman of the Consumer Protection Agency of Egypt, and also have some other uh, heads, like president of the committee uh, within the Commissa for Consumer Protection, the head of committee of experts in the Arab League for Consumer Protection, and past president for the IGE, the Intergovernmental Group of Experts uh, for the Consumer Protection, was Ankhted in Geneva. I'm very glad to be one out 3,399 participants in this international conference from 72 countries. Really, I'm very glad to attend. Thank you. Yes. Would you please share with us a little bit about your priorities and some of the most recent hot topics you've seen in Egypt? Uh, we have a challenge because when I take the, in charge to be the chairman of the Consumer Protection Agency, really I discovered that we're a little bit behind, not like the States, where, the, where when they started, it was uh, 1989 when uh, they, some people suffer in New York, and that was the date when they found the FDA, and uh, also we've been studying the history of uh, consumer protection in uh, in the states like 15th of march to uh, 1962 when mr kennedy delivered his famous speech on, on the congress and passed to recently the new guidelines from uh, the general assembly of the united nation of the on consumer protection where they uh, consider this new guidelines is a part of the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030 because the first goal in that agenda is fighting poverty. We have to all do something for the vulnerable consumer to at least to protect the money in his hand. If we don't have a consumer protection, that would mean that he won't be able to use the money in his hand in a proper way. Uh, the second, so when we consider we go for to change the law to and we adjusted all most of the article in especially in the European Union because we went through a very successful twinning with uh, the European uh, Commission and we put our plan to change the law to raise the capacity building of the staff who are in charge to implement the law and will deal with the consumer protection issues using the IT and the modern sophisticated uh, methods to support our work. And the fourth one is the most important one, how we raise the capacity building of the NGOs because they are our partner in consumer protection without having a strong NGOs is operating and participating in that system. There will be no consumer protection. This is the way. And uh, let me say that next week, I hope that we are going to celebrate that to finish the discussion with the parliament, the Egyptian parliament, to issue the new law. The old one was consist of 24 articles, but the new ones is consist of 76 articles, and we cover some areas where were not exist in the old law, like the distance sale, the e-commerce, the second sale, and also the timeshare, 
and the money transfer, all that we we found that the consumer suffer from it, we cover it with a legal framework, and we hope that with this new law, we'll have too much power in the market to control it in a decent way. And we always say we are not against competition because competition and consumer protection is two faces for one coin, and this is what we do. For that, we established in Egypt the High Committee for Market Control. It consists of every governmental key uh, player in the market just to coordinate their work together and to work in the, in, in the principle. We have to be uh, pre-act to avoid and to have a zero vision complaint. Thank you. Tunde, would you like to tell us what's going on in Nigeria? Uh, thank you. My name is Tunde Irukera. I am the Director General of the Consumer Protection Council in Nigeria. And I'm new in office. I've been there for just about one year. And the key priorities in the period that I've been there is how to push um, complaint resolution reforms from the institutionalized mediation point of the government to uh, happen in the marketplace between the companies and the consumers. Another key priority is uh, developing the appropriate guidelines and um, uh, business codes for <clears throat> businesses to adopt in how they approach consumer issues. And finally, just approaching the consumer education from a more robust standpoint. Hello. Um, I'm, next, we'll go over to Zambia. Liyama, can you please share with us uh, a few of the priorities of the Zambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission? Uh, thank you, Dion. Um, for Zambia, uh, what remains a priority is uh, creating and enhancing uh, consumer awareness and education in terms of making consumers more aware of what their rights are in the marketplace, uh, looking at the type of consumers and the, ty and the nature of the products that come onto our markets. It's very important that uh, consumers go out there and they know what their rights are. Once they are grieved, they know where to report uh, such complaints. Uh, we do uh, commemorate Consumer Rights Day every year on the 15th uh, March of every year. This is a time that we go out in the marketplaces and in town, create enhancing um, consumer awareness and incorporating all the traders and people that are walking around in the streets and teaching them what their rights are uh, in the marketplace. Uh, consumers do have rights as well as traders do have obligations, so each party has to understand what their rights are as they go on with their, with their business. Um, on the other hand, we also handle competition issues. Uh, we do focus on major regulation, which is very important, that as businesses come uh, through the want to invest in, this, in Zambia, they need to be aware of what... Um, Major regulation is all about the time frames that it takes for a major to be approved because half the time people come and they want uh, their major approved in less than a week. But that takes uh, legally, uh, it's a 90-day period that we need to review the major. But of course, we do fast-track major applications. So it's important that they understand the timelines uh, as regards major review. Terrific. David, would you like to share with us uh, your activities and responsibilities in Kenya? Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I think for us, we've really been uh, for quite a few years focusing on the traditional merger and uh, uh, merger regulations because it's really only until six months ago that the consumer protection provisions in uh, our act uh, were amended to really give us uh, the powers and uh, presence to really going to consumer protection in a, in a comprehensive way. I think if I start with the basically anti-competitive practices, one thing that we've really been focusing on is really looking at specific sectors. And uh, uh, two sectors actually come to mind, uh, mobile telephony and uh, e-commerce. I think uh, most of you who are in uh, ICN India a couple of weeks ago must have noted we were lucky to be one of the co-winners of the World Bank uh, uh, annual contact, uh, contest uh, on uh, the category on structural reforms in key sectors, uh, where we jointly won with the British Capital Markets Authority for uh, our work on uh, trying to bring uh, a level playing field in the uh, mobile telephony sector. 
this is one sector that in Kenya, as most people would know, uh, we've made quite a lot of advances in terms of uh, mobile payments. Uh, but then obviously this brings uh, a lot of challenges, uh, which uh, brings me back to the second issue regarding uh, uh, data protection. Uh, this is one area that we really want to uh, put a very, very, very strong effort on uh, from the consumer pers uh, protection perspective. And uh, we've been very lucky to draw in on the FTC resources uh, regarding our preliminary work on this. And uh, hopefully very soon in collaboration with, of course, the Attorney General's office, uh, I'm informed that we'll uh, together with other relevant authorities, uh, hope to have uh, our data protection uh, act in place. One thing that, again, I would really want to point out, uh, particularly on our major control regime, is uh, the way in which, over the last few years, we've really tried to make it very easy, particularly for international firms uh, acquiring uh, companies uh, in Kenya and well, in the region, we've really tried to reduce the number of days that it takes to approve, to evaluate and approve uh, uh, merger applications. I'm informed that I think we are now down to an average of 42 days, which obviously for lawyers and, and companies applying is something that we quite happy to inform them. Uh, I'm informed that we'll try and reduce that average in the coming few years. So we're really happy to collaborate with like-minded agencies, and as I mentioned, particularly FTC uh, going forward, as we really work on this important area of uh, data protection, which for obvious reasons is <laughs> uh, the topic of the week, I would imagine. Thank you. Thank you. You've all been so uh, generous with your time. Can you share a little bit more about what brings you to uh, the ABA meetings? We have the pleasure of working together in the African Consumer Protection Dialogue and um, just want to explore a little bit more about your unique perspectives. First, I'm very appreciated to be here. Really, I'm very appreciated because I wouldn't miss it for a word. And uh, thanks to FTC because uh, really that we are in a very good term of cooperation for the African Dialogue and we are participating. We do our share in the African Dialogue. We, for sure, we want to escalate to different, uh, more higher level of cooperation because uh, at least we use our area of expertise either or to educate each other because we know that we need, there is too much work in Africa in consumer protection. And with the cooperation of the FTC, that would make it much easier for us to reach the standards uh, we will all uh, accept it for uh, the consumer, especially for the vulnerable consumer. Well, one of the reasons that we would like for sure in uh, how the FTC is going to support the new committee for the consumer protection of uh, COMESA because it consists of 19 countries, the African, from African countries. It's within the concept of the FTC of supporting the Africa in all. And this is particularly is for, for the 19 countries. And we want in the future to expand for that because we need to have a permanent a committee will go for the very tiny details of the daily working duties for consumer protection. And that would be a part of our discussion. And but for, for I noticed that there is too many valuable precious uh, sessions in the ABA and I'm really I used uh, them in my uh, knowledge and my uh, experience. And uh, usually they say those who dare to lead shall never cease to learn. We are coming to learn from each other and from attending such valuable, important in consumer protection, in uh, antitrust and all that kind of, of uh, stuff will be reflected in the way we do our job 
to protect the consumer much more on to use some new methods uh, to use that area of uh, knowledge about what's happening in the other country and how we can bring it f uh, to our country from the shortest distance. This is all about how we support each other because we become like a small village. What happened in Egypt can affect the states. What happened in the states can affect Egypt. We all are connected and this is the new vision for the world and we hope that we keep doing the same and we hope that FTC keep doing that wonderful job because really they are done a wonderful job at least to bring us all together in an annual uh, meeting. We were lucky that we host one of those meetings in, in Egypt. We hope that we can uh, host it again in the very near future or somewhere else but we are very appreciated for the FTC, for the wonderful job they are doing to the African countries. Well, um, I think it's uh, great to be at the meetings here. At a minimum, it's an opportunity to meet with other enforcers and also meet with the Consumer Protection and Antitrust Bar and uh, understand exactly what's going on. It provides an opportunity to also um, discuss with the bar and, and the companies and let them know what the priorities are for at least uh, from a policy standpoint and that assists in how the whole market uh, uh, operates. Uh, in addition, I think it's a very important rallying point for um, enforcers to understand that sometimes the nature of the challenges they're experiencing are similar and across the, that for me has been very comforting just knowing that the challenges are similar. Uh, comforting in the sense that it makes you realize that you're not in some part of the world that is isolated. And secondly, it also provides uh, the best approach to solutions. That way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, but more importantly, uh, like uh, Artef said, is that it assists with building a very important network of collaboration, especially with an organization like the FTC and uh, for us uh, in Africa, the um, African dialogue that's promoted by FTC has been an incredible tool for us to um, pursue or advance our enforcement priorities. And one other thing it also does is that it allows it it assists you with really um, defining or clarifying what your priorities are and, and how to execute them. So I think it's, it's a very useful time and I found it very helpful. Thank you. If I could just uh, jump in there to say that um, that he has litigated cases both in Nigeria and in the United States, including in the U.S. Court of Appeals. So uh, that means a lot uh, coming from you. Thank you very much. Um, I think the ABA antitrust meeting creates a unique uh, opportunity where enforcers meet and they share their different um, experiences. So you do learn from different enforcers and what the experiences have been, how you handle cases. Uh, the best way you can and as Tunda said there's no need of reinventing the wheel so you have to learn from other um, authorities experiences and for Zambia I think it also creates a unique um, a unique fora to market ourselves uh, since we're going to be the next ISPEN president uh, it's, it's a good opportunity for us to market uh, different um, authorities that are here to attend the next ISPEN meeting in Zambia, which will take place sometime uh, this year, 2018. Um, and our area of focus under the ISPEN is really to, to enhance this freedom for consumers through global collaboration. So we feel that cross-border enforcement cooperation um, is important for us as this has a bearing in the way different authorities handle their cases. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very important and we're happy to be part of this meeting. Uh, it has worked to our benefit. Yeah, I think for me, two things. Apart, of course, from the information sharing, um, one thing that I really find useful with the attending ABA meetings is uh, the rigor. Uh, being an industrial economist, uh, I find quite a few of the sessions really go into details uh, in terms of uh, what the latest thinking is in terms of analytical uh, thinking. For me, I find that extremely useful. Uh, just today, I got an email from a friend who wants to do some work on two-sided markets and uh, market definition. And uh, obviously, yesterday, there was a whole session on two-sided markets. So for me, having sat in on that 
uh, session yesterday gave me quite a lot of insights on the rigor, economic rigor that goes into the analysis. The other thing, of course, is really learning in terms of best practice. And I think for me and for us at the competition authority, uh, whether it is major control, uh, whether it is really consumer protection issues that we really, as I mentioned, just starting to work on, uh, is very, very, very critical. And the resources, the presentations on the sessions that I'm carrying back is, you know, back home is really going to be very helpful for my colleagues in terms of best practice. Terrific. And thank you, everyone, for sharing uh, these comments today. Yeah, this is uh, Hugh, um, and uh, I just uh, wanted to add what, from the FTC perspective, um, we uh, gain from the ABA meetings. Uh, obviously, um, as the markets uh, with technology become increasingly global, the importance of international cooperation and sharing information becomes increasingly important. And we've seen in the 90s and through this uh, beginning of this century that as with the development of the internet, with the penetration of the internet, with the increased uh, use of mobile smartphones, that increasingly everywhere the issues of e-commerce and digital economy uh, become relevant and important. And uh, obviously the history of, for example, mobile payments in Africa is one good example of how this has reached in a very significant way the African markets as well. One of our challenges as consumer agencies is to be able to cooperate to protect our consumers in those globalized markets. One of the things that the ABA provides increasingly is to be able to share the perspectives of foreign enforcers who come. The program, in my experience, in the last few years has become increasingly rich in terms of the consumer protection offerings, and so increasingly rich in terms of the foreign agency participation, and there's an opportunity there for us, I think, to take advantage of that. The, the really big picture, uh, Atif mentioned the UN doing work on guidelines for consumer protection, um, and the OECD has also done work on e-commerce uh, and revised its guidelines very recently. And that work really points to the importance of cooperating both on enforcement issues and also on policy discussions as we move forward, because more and more the problems we see are problems we share and challenges we share and have to work together on. Terrific. If uh, our listeners today have any questions or wish to follow up with any of you about issues in your country or what is going on with your agency, uh, how can they reach each of you? My contact also it's a CPA at www.cpa.gov.eg. And if you allow me to add, it's not only about consumer protection. It is about how we establish a good environment for the investors to come and invest in our countries, either no matter Egypt, Nigeria, Kenya, because you can't come to a place to invest to produce a product while you can't protect that product from the counterfeit and all other unknown goods. So raising the capacity building of consumer protection, it is at the same time, it is another protection for the investors to come and invest or for those who has the right for the labels to be sure that there is uh, enforcement is able to protect their brands. Well, uh, the website of the Consumer Protection Council in Nigeria is at www.cpc.gov.ng. Uh, you could send us an email at contact at cpc.gov.ng. If you want to contact me personally, uh, you can send an email to me, and my name is Tunde, and that would be T U N D E dot, my last name is I R U K E R A at cpc.gov.ng. Thank you. And for the details for the Zambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, you can reach us on our website. Uh, www.ccpc.org.zm 
most of the details of our uh, officers are found on the website. Uh, you can send us an email or you can call us. Uh, for consumer protection, be sure to direct them to Brian. And for competition issues, uh, you can uh, direct them to Luyamba. And um, if you want to appreciate more about Zambia, please do join us at the next ISPEN meeting. Thank you. Yeah, for me, um, we also obviously have a web page, uh, www.cak.go.ke. And uh, therein you can get uh, a link to send in inquiries. Uh, official communications go to the Director General at uh, info, sorry, on info at cak.go.ke. Adam, can I jump in there? Um, I want to say uh, that also uh, the programming committee of the ABA is a place where uh, lots of thinking is going into how we approach more the global seminar series, for example, and how we bring more um, content and particularly international consumer protection content to the spring meeting. So this has been really gratifying to see the explosion of international consumer protection um, content in the spring meeting, which is one of the reasons the reinforcing uh, reasons why the value is found by these colleagues here, uh, the, the enforcers from throughout the world. So I think it's a virtuous circle and that I'm honored to be um, on the committee, on the programming committee, uh, together with the colleagues who are working on these efforts. Terrific. And Dion and Hugh, if people wanted to learn more about the FTC and its international outreach, how could they contact either of you? So at the FTC, uh, www.ftc.gov, we have a really, um, you know, a, a really rich uh, website there with lots of content. We also have an OIA page, Office of International Affairs page. Uh, you can reach me personally at D Woods Bell, D W O O D S B E L L at FTC.gov. I oversee the consumer protection. Uh, technical assistance program. And you can reach uh, Hugh at H. Stevenson, H-S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N at ftc.gov. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, this concludes another podcast from the ABA section of Antitrust Law Spring Meeting 2018. If you like what you heard, please find us and rate us in Apple Podcasts. I'm Adam Beagle of Alston & Bird. Until next time, thank you for listening. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.